How you doing guys? Today we're going to button up the bottom end of the Magnum 16. I have the thin line oil pan from my Magnum 10. Ultimately it's a K-series cast iron thin oil pan. I have the adapter plate that my friend made for me uh, on his, I think, it was, I think it's a laser cutter. It's either, yeah, it's a laser cutter. So that has been made. I have the ice pick dipper from the Kerber rod. I'm going to just gently screw that into place right now without dropping it in there, I guess. And we are having difficulties. As you can tell, I'm not left-handed, but there you go. And the reason why I'm just gently screwing this in right now um, is I want to take a measurement from basically the bottom end of the crank to the tip of the dipper. Now, the stock Kohler rod with a thin oil pan, the distance from basically the crankshaft to the end of the dipper is two and an eighth inches. So I need this to be less than two and an eighth inches. So that way it doesn't, when it's running, it doesn't interfere with the oil pan itself. And when I take my little steel ruler and we, oopsie daisy, uh, steel ruler and we take a measurement, we are roughly at one and three quarters. Just just about there. Maybe a touch higher, maybe just a touch lower. But in any event, we're at one and three uh, quarter inches. This will clear the oil pan so we're all set. What I'll do is I will clean this up. I will put a touch of blue Loctite on the threads. And then I'll torque it into place to standard uh, SEA torque for a quarter 28 which I believe, I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and then we'll torque it in. I'll use a little tiny quarter inch um, bar torque wrench. The bolts, I'll need to clean the bolts for installation of the oil pan. Those are 3816. I'll use the stock Kohler recommended uh, torque rating for that. And then we'll put it together. I'm not going to run the gaskets. I'm just going to run some... Uh, ultra gray uh, sealer so that way basically we'll glue the adapter plate and the oil pan to the block it shouldn't leak oil uh, obviously before I do all of that I'll lubricate the main bearings I'll put some oil on the gears I'll make sure this is all oiled up and I have white lithium grease on the lifters and the cam lobes so that should be sufficient for initial startup all right guys let me get the bolts together cleaned up and we'll move forward so as you can see the the dipper is installed it's i just rotated the rod or the piston and the rod down it's a quarter 28 according to the kohler manual because in the back of the k series manual uh kohler recommends um certain torque ratings for thread sizes. This being a quarter 28, the Kohler manual recommends uh, that you torque those bolts to a max of 85 inch pounds. So I broke out the old inch pound torque wrench and I set it to 85 to 90 inch pounds. I did use some blue Loctite on that. So once that all sets up, that should be fine. I made sure that the threads were uh, good and clean and dry when I when I put that dipper into the rod cap. So we're all set there. Just give that some time to set up. Next is to clean the block and the adapter plate. This adapter plate essentially just fills in these casting uh, openings, I guess you would call them, on the Magnum block. It basically sets down onto the block like this. You, you bolt it on the outsides. That's what secures to the wide base. Then it provides the provisions for the small K-series oil pan to be bolted on. And essentially, without paint, this is what it all looks like. Um, and all that just kind of bolts together. So I'm going to clean up the bolts, uh, clean up all the surfaces, make sure everything is squeaky clean. Um, I'm going to put a light layer of sealer. I mean, very light, light, light on both sides of the on the block both sides of the spacer or the adapter and on the pan, drop it all together. I'm going to factory torque the 3816 bolts 
for the oil pan down first, and then I will torque the bolts on the outsides. Uh, obviously a bolt and a nut and a washer to just keep this from moving around. I'll torque that in and then we should be all set on the bottom end. Now everything is clean and ready to go. I have all my hardware laid out on the table so I won't be, hopefully, <laughs> not fumbling around quite as much. Here's the adapter plate. It's clean. It's ready to go. The block is ready to go. I am going to put some a light coat of Permatex or gasket sealer on the block on both sides of the adapter plate and the oil pan. I am going to justify the oil pan a little bit as far this direction as I can. And the reason for that is this. For my tractor, the 857, this bearing plate goes below or the frame rails right here. It goes beyond the frame rail. So in order to get as much room or clearance between the frame rail and this bearing plate, I need as much space as I possibly can uh, between the basically the oil pan and the, and the bearing plate. So when I put this all together uh, and just about ready to torque it, I am going to shift the oil pan as far this direction um, as I can. So that way I get as much clearance as I possibly can. I am going to torque the oil pan bolts, the actual bolts that hold the oil pan on, to the K-series specification, which is 260 inch-pounds or about 21 and a half foot-pounds. I'll probably just end up doing it at 22 foot-pounds all the way around. And then on the outboard ones, I have these locking nuts so that way they don't loosen up. I'm just going to, I'm going to make them tight, not super tight. And once they snug, I'll just give it a little bit more and that will hold those together. And I will blue lock tight the actual pan bolts uh, in the block so that way they don't loosen up. Next shot should have this all buttoned up. Just to show you how I have everything buttered up. All this, all the surfaces have a light coat of sealer. There is sealer between the block and the adapter plate. Um, one thing I did, I forgot to mention, is once I dropped the adapter plate on the block, I just kind of moved it around a little bit, you know, shifted it, pr pushed it down to make sure that it was all bedded into the sealer itself. That way, when I torque it down, um, I know I got a good solid contact between all the parts. So before this stuff really sets up, I'm going to get that oil pan on and torqued it down. And there it is. It's all torqued in. Everything looks really nice. Um, this little bit of ooze or squeeze out of the sealer, I'm just going to leave it there for now. And just before I paint it, I'll just take a razor blade and cut it off and you'll never see it. Um, I am going to get a piece of masking tape and cover over the drain hole. I did spin the motor over to completely verify that the dipper will not hit the oil pan, which it won't, or it didn't, so we should be all set there. Set all the bolts to 22 foot-pounds, or 160-ish uh, inch-pounds, same with the outboard bolts, and as you can tell, the, let's try to get that to focus better, I guess not, um, there it is. You can see it's nice and straight, nothing's bent, nothing's warped. So I'll let it sit like this for at least 24 hours, probably longer, and that way I know that gray sealer is really set up uh, nice, nicely before I flip the motor over. And then it is just about ready to be painted. It's supposed to be a little bit warmer outside in the next couple days, so my plan is to get this thing all cleaned up and a little bit taped up and taken outside in order to get it uh, painted. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. If you like small engines and tractor little rebuilds and things like that, please subscribe. Um, I very much appreciate all your support. Thank you for the wonderful comments. Uh, please comment below if you like. And as always, have a great day.